right, so we pulled this thing out in the sun this morning just to kind of check over everything uh, where we're at because you can't really see great inside the uh, the shop. Sometimes the lighting throws stuff off. Um, I mean, she looks good. All right, so it is Thursday. This is our last full day on this car. We got Friday, which is uh, half day. We work 8 to 11, and if I need to pull overtime, I'll pull overtime Friday night, Saturday. I'll do what I got to do to make sure this thing is done. Um, today just went boom, downhill fast. So we are going to run, let's see here, all of our small stuff. So we've already prepped out um, our gas door. I think I forgot to put more coats on it. It looks like I did, so we're going to add our other three more coats to that one over there. We got these two lower filler pieces and we have our tail lights. Uh, just gonna get clear, the customer does not want the tail lights smoked or tinted. I would have lightly smoked them, but it's my opinion. It's all it is, just an opinion. It's not worth anything. Um, so we're just gonna clear coat them. That, when you just clear coat tail lights, it does make them look brand new, like from the factory. I have a feeling, I haven't asked him, but I have a feeling he's going for that like, factory appearance on this car and not really like a modified car I know a lot of y'all are loving that he's putting trim back on this thing um, and I feel like he is leaving the trim on it because he does kind of want it to look back you know slightly factory so we are going to get these trims prepped out and I'm going to show you the issue with these because these things suck all right so here's what we got these suck this is terrible this is the worst part of the whole entire freaking job these are going to be a walk in the park. All these need to do is be sanded and painted. No double-sided tape, okay? Like we stated in an earlier video, this double-sided tape is not the same double-sided tape we use nowadays. This stuff is the hulk of double-sided tape. This stuff sucks really bad. Um, an eraser wheel just doesn't want to cut this stuff, even on the car. When I originally had stripped these doors down of the double sided take and tape and took them off like it i fought with like one and then like i think i did two i think i fought with both doors on the racer wheel and by the time i got to fenders i said screw it and used the 90 degree uh grinder because i knew i was doing primer work over top of it so the way these moldings work the reason why they look like this um these are the ones he sent me uh i was actually worried about this how they look like this because the other ones that we took off i had laid out and got pretty decent but they still have some curve in them and i was worried about them going back on straight um i'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all this straight up front i think that he is gonna have problems with these um i think that you will have problems with these but i could be completely wrong so here's why metal never forgets its shape normally anybody that fabricates it knows that so kind of once you bend it it's kind of hard you have to bend it back like if this when they're straight right out the gate they're good but then once they get bent they're just a pain in the butt um double size tape tape nowadays is not as strong as double size tape used to be so we are going to try to straighten these afterwards as best as we can with our hands to get these edges back straight because when you go to re-double side tape these and you go to push these onto the panel they are going to want to when it get hot they're going to want to pull back off so like for instance this edge right here that's rolled out this thing is going to want to pull back off even though we're going to bend it you know and try to get it straightened back out it sometimes it could want to pull back off now i'm hoping that he never has a problem with these so i don't want nobody to have a problem with these um and i'm hoping that if you do yours you'll never have a problem with these but this one right here is pretty freaking tore up man uh, that would be one I was worried about and I actually messaged him and asked if he had new ones because the ones that we got off Even though we tried our best were in that shape. Uh, this one's not as bad But this is the reason why I messaged him because I was worried about how uh, Boat out they are the ones that come off the car were not period correct on um, a lot of the panels So these are period correct the doors I guess are period correct, but I think the fenders were wrong or something. I'm not a fox body guy. I just know he was explaining to me that they weren't period correct on some of the stuff. So we've got to get this double side tape off and we have to get a very clean surface. You cannot just come in here and put double side tape over this old double side tape. This stuff right here is old double side tape. Okay, see right there where my fingernail is? So this part is metal. That is double side tape. This is all metal all the way to there. 
So your metal is what you stick your double-sided tape to. Um, don't ever just put double-sided tape over double-sided tape because then you also are spacing, you're spacing it out. So if it originally was like this, now it's stacked two out if you stack double-sided tape over it. What I'm thinking being the eraser wheel will not work. And if you don't know what I mean by an eraser wheel, this is what we use for an eraser wheel. We come in here yesterday on this Tahoe job and Ed took all the pinstripe off as you can see and it doesn't damage your clear coat. It just, it smudges it and you go back and put some wax over it. But this is what an eraser wheel um, looks like. It goes on your drill. You can order it off of eBay. You can order it off Amazon and uh, get it to your door if your local parts store doesn't have it. A lot of Vance's or O'Reilly's have it. But being this has a mixture of, I mean, this this double side tape was so strong, it literally pulled the freaking metal off whatever car it come off of. Even though it was rusty, it still literally ripped the metal off in places. Um, that eraser wheel just ain't going to cut it. You literally kill yourself. Like, it's just not. And somebody's got some freaking ridiculous glue on here. Like, I don't know what this crap is. This stuff is hard enough freaking rock um so we're gonna try to grinder we're gonna try a combination of stuff the pads that i have are 36 grit so i went and hollered at mike real fast mike has these which are like a abrasion pads to get the uh to get stuff off and then these are going to be extremely wore out 50 grit so there's the number five right there so extremely wore out 50 grit so we're gonna try that first the 36 will work, but once you get into that thin uh, aluminum, if you're not careful, uh, the you know the 36 will eat right into the metal, and you definitely don't want to do that. You want to have end up with a nice clean surface of the metal. So we're gonna try these uh, less aggressive ones first, and see if we can slowly grind this double side tape off. And then if we have to move on to the 36, we have we'll we'll do it. And probably like on like a clump like this, and on these spots that rip the metal off the car we'll have to do 36 grit to get some of that down and then we'll step down to the finer stuff. So let me get at it and uh, let me try to get these pieces cleaned up. All right, so we got these uh, little ones cleaned up. Still have not done the big one. This one is just, this thing is taking freaking time. Um, as you can see, I don't have it all off yet. And here's why, is because I am using the 36 grit. And as you can see, it's not damaging the metal. I'm still leaving a slight bit of adhesive on there. So I'm not taking it down to raw metal. Boy, I had a hot, you can't see it, but I had a hot piece sling over and sit on my hand for a second. It sucked. Um, but that's the 36 grit. It doesn't really clog it up too bad. Mine's wore out extreme on the outside. So, uh, it's really wore down already. So that might be helping with it. But, uh, even that it was slow. So what I was doing is, um, you don't want to grind your edge because then you will mess up the edge. So all this is, is glue slung over it. But you, you also don't want to grind it like this where you're taking it and turning it. You know it's turning like this you don't want to take the glue and push the glue this way or this way or any way left or right you want to push the glue off the panel okay because what happens is then if you if you are spinning the pad like this and you're pushing the glue that way then it's going to eventually make this big ball and start just bouncing the uh grinder up because the ball of glue is going to get underneath there and then it's not actually removing anything so i paused real fast on this one what you basically want to do is remove it like this so that you're working it to the pad you can see my cut pattern so all of my cut patterns are basically at a 45 like this okay and you're working it off then what i was doing if you see with my hands is as i was going when i got a little bit of build up now i stopped on this one to show you but when i got a little bit of build up i just simply took it like this and just picked that off to get it out of the way because that's some obviously removed okay and then you'd pick that out of the way throw it on the floor and your big pile of mess down there 
and then you would get back on it and push some more off the panel. So you just kept kind of cutting it and pushing off the panel. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the 36 grit off and I'm going to switch to this uh, abrasive uh, pad remover. And I'm basically just going to skim over all of these again just to remove the last bit of residue that's there. Uh, kind of like polish it out and then I'll take paint thinner probably and just wipe over it one more time. And then we still got to do these long boys. So let's see here. How long it took me to do that was a freaking minute. God, man, I've got literally what I just did times two plus one price. So three times, almost two and a half times how long it took me to do these. It's going to take me to do them. So this is a freaking nightmare this morning to say the least. Um, but I'm going to finish cleaning these up. Man, I've been up here and I started cleaning about two feet of these door moldings that come off the car. And then Eddie is like, Yo, what's in this big long box up front? I don't know. It must be some other trim for the car. I don't think I'm replacing door moldings. I open it up. We got door moldings. So two feet of that cleaning the double side tape off the other ones. It's kind of a waste of time. I'm about to cut these open and see what he sent me. So the door moldings are the same. The ones he sent me right here are the same as the ones that come off the car because the car is 85, 86, um, so the doors were correct to the car, and the quarter moldings were correct. All that stuff was correct. The only thing that needed to be changed was the fenders up here because they were wrong. They were the wrong year. They were too new or something, so the moldings needed to be changed on the fenders. So um, I'm still using all of the moldings he sent me besides the door moldings. I'm going to use his original door moldings because the other shorter moldings kind of like rolled up when we took them off and everything and it just didn't look it just didn't look they didn't they didn't look that great like they're not as in good of a shape as the ones he sent me so we're gonna rock and roll with the ones he sent me and keep cleaning these things up All right, there's our moldings all cleaned up. So I switched it up on this one and decided that I would give this thing a go, even though I hate this thing more than anything because it uh, just slings crap everywhere. But uh, it just wasn't going, the amount of length I had to do just wasn't going fast enough for me on the other one. This is what you end up with. Dude, that's glued to the shirt. I don't even know how I'm gonna get that off. This is what I hate about it, if you can see it. It's got metal in it. So right there, the little strands out of the flat wheel will literally just stab into you the whole time you're doing this crap. Dude, I bet I just ruined the shirt. Like it literally, oh, I guess it'll come off, but it don't brush off really good, as you can see. This sucks. Well, there's a ball. This sucks. So now I've got to flip them over, get everything scuffed on the other side, and get them painted out with a trim paint. Let's so go. So we've got an issue. So this is what is this, y'all? The 85, 86 era moldings, and this is the newer moldings. I don't even want to put ears on it. If you're watching this video and not following the channel and you're new, I don't know my ears of the Fox Body stuff. So I just know that the moldings he sent me are the uh, period correct ones for the um, for the four eye front bumper, whereas the moldings that were on there are not period correct. So we're gonna grab these two. These are the same pieces, different eras. And I'm gonna show you what issue we're having. So this is the ones that were on here. This is the original ones to the fender. And they fit on there perfect, okay? They sit correct on that end. They sit correct on this end. They have a tab that's getting in the way right there, okay, on the end. But you can see they line up with the fender correctly and they are the correct height. They're a little long on the bottom, so they are a little wider than uh, these up these up here. You know, this one's a little wider, but um, it sits decent. Now, when we go to put our new ones on that he sent me, first problem that you're gonna see, sorry, first problem you're gonna see is that your stud is gonna be all the way to that hole and this stud is gonna be centered. So your spread on your studs are wider, 
okay, when you go to put this in there, try to do this one handed, okay? Hold on a second. Okay, I, don't, I can't get them down there, them studs, to go into the holes because they're a little too low. The top ones will go in, but the spread is pretty tremendous. And then you can see it opens up the gap in the bumper. So the molding matches, but the fender is different. So the fender's for the new years. Now them, the newer years. Now them over there will double side tape on. So I believe we can make that work. These have to bolt on. So let me go up here to the bench and show you what you what you got. Sadly is that some of y'all will probably have a fix for this. This is normally how YouTube works is I figure it out myself and record me figuring it out and then y'all comment on it and y'all tell me what I did wrong. Or not necessarily, y'all not calling me out, but y'all y'all give me excellent ideas that I didn't think of in the moment. So that's normally how that works. Um, so when we flip them over and put these side by side for a comparison, you can see that they're the same length. The molding is the same length. So physically it goes in there right. We already know that this is the right width because it lines up to the front bumper but your studs are off. So you see how this stud is more in this way and this stud is more up near the edge. All right, same with that one. Is that set in really far and that one's really near the edge. Um, these over here are pretty close. You can tell they're more kind of like this at an angle. This one is more this way, whereas this one's more that way. And of course you have the set bit wrong. So they're really close. It's just, they don't quite line up. So um, I'm not an idiot. I can search Google real fast and see what other people are doing, but you only really got a couple of options. Open your holes up so they'll bolt in there correctly or double side tape this on. Now you cannot double side this tape on safely. I just spoke with a customer. You could cut these studs off right here and put you a little double side tape around the edge, but then all your double side tape is adhering to is this little tiny edge. Um, and that's not right. Like that's not, that's not the best option for this to hold long term. Now, if you wanted to do that, what I would recommend, if you wanted to double side tape this, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend something to you. I would drill one, two, or three, at least two holes in the end of this, and then also drill them in the end of your fender, okay? Take your bumper off, come through here and drill that way. And then I would put zip ties through that, okay? So I would double side tape it on, and then I would come through here and loop zip ties through the fender and this as a safety so you don't lose this thing. That way, if the double side tape starts coming off like this, then the fender can't fall off or it can't fall off because it's got at least two zip ties and all it's gonna kind of be doing is just moving around. But at least as soon as you get part, you know, you hopefully will catch it and see it and then you can fix the issue. I'm not gonna double side tape this because I don't, I'm not comfortable with that being secured. Now, I did tell them you could go and fill the back side of this with epoxy or something, and that's gonna be, you know, the same height like this, get it where it's full, that's gonna be the same height as this to put double side tape on. That would work. But, um, we don't have epoxy here right now. Anything affordable, I got panel bond, but we all know that that's anywhere from 40 to, 40 to 80, 90 dollars a tube for panel bond, and uh, one tube would probably barely fill that up. So he doesn't want to be putting 100 dollars in each molding just to do that. It would need to be something more uh, efficient. So I am going to try to figure out something real fast. I'm thinking to see how much I can open these holes up with a step down bit. If I can get the studs, if I can get the holes open up big enough that this that it will physically go on there then i'm not worried about it i can go to the hardware store and get really big fender washers and i can put the fender washers on the inside so that it it holds um i just need to get that and the, fortunately the studs are not far enough off where you can really really re-drill it you know everything just needs to be moved ever so slightly and if you have a rim tool you know that would rim this thing out and move it then i guess you could do that but uh you would need to go up um up on these at least and i think back on one of them so this sucks i wish that this would have been before uh paint but i did not know and i figured that if he said they would fit they would fit and obviously he didn't know obviously it was just a innocent mistake um so some of y'all probably got the answer go ahead and drop it below what you would do but uh, I'm gonna see what I can uh, come up with in this situation right now. All right, so there we go. So I got lucky on that. I think uh, I started out with 
the step down bit and then I realized, you know, putting force on it and walking it that way and I realized it was going to have to go too much. And then when I started looking closer, your bottom two holes work. They're the same. They're the correct height. They're the correct spread. Everything. It's the top two that are problematic. So then I thought about, okay, well, let's whack the top studs off. Let's bolt the bottom two in and let's double side tape the top. The bottom two sucked up tight with nuts will keep pressure on it where the top will stick. I just wasn't willing to do that. Like I was like, no, there's got to be a better way. So I started out with a little tiny eighth inch hole and I'll show you on the next one. And we drilled it and then we stepped it out so that we could get our studs in like that basically. So that's all I did. And I stepped it up to a uh, whatever size the step down bit is. A half inch. So I stepped it up to a half inch, down to a half inch. So let's uh, bolt this one on and go do that. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our molding, hold it up here, put our tabs in our bottom holes, and then take our top tabs. And we're going to kind of pull our molding up because you got a little slack play. So we're just going to go ahead and pull it up because you don't want to drill too close to these other holes. You want to drill a little high. So then I'm just going to make sure my end is right. And you can look on this end, kind of butt it against the bumper. To get your depth right and make sure both sides are pulled up and we're just going to mark the center of the stud above the stud the center of the stud okay and then we're going to come back and take your sharpie and we're just going to mark it down a little bit about center between your dot and the edge of that about the thickness of the stud so now if you hold this back up here your new dots should be dead center of where these top studs need to be. Mine's dead on the money. Now we're going to take an 8 inch drill bit and we're going to drill a pilot hole right on your dot that where your stud's going to be. Not your upper dot, your lower dot. So this is the hole that the drill bit's going to ride in. The other drill bit. Now I'm going to go up to a quarter and go right inside our pilot hole. Now we're going to go with our step down bit. This step down bit starts on the 3 16th, the second hole is a quarter. We're going to step this thing all the way up to half an inch. When you're stepping this, we don't want to just hold no pressure on it like straight in because it could start to walk into that hole. We want to pull and put pressure upwards away from that hole. So we want to put pressure, we want to pull pressure away from that hole to make sure that we hopefully don't go into that hole. And if you accidentally come out of this and go into it, it's probably gonna throw your bit down in there and then you're gonna have a hard time getting that hole drilled out. So I'm gonna put upwards pressure. Upwards pressure allowed me to literally go right through that without um, falling into that hole. So we're gonna do the same on this one. All right, both of ours done. Take your molding, voila. That one looks like it's so close to the edge, actually, that we're going to have to put a little tiny bit of touch-up paint right here on the edge of these, you know, because the paint chipped around the edge. Right, that's the part, that's the bad thing when you're making modifications that you didn't know about after paint is it's kind of just is what it is. The uh, front one does not show. The front one really needs to go down to make your gap right, to make your... Uh, your gap between your body line right here and the top of the molding, it really needs to sit like that. Um, but then it won't match up to your bumper because I've got my body lines on my bumper pretty much, or my top pretty much right. So it's just, you're gonna have to fudge it, meet it in the middle. I'll put some touch-up paint on the edge of this one and this one, the other side I didn't have to do no touch-up paint on. Uh, it's just a luck of the draw, but we'll make sure our molding is right and we won't focus so much on the body line. Now, if you're a new shop or you're just starting out or you're trying to do this on the side, I know for a fact that I have a couple people following the channel that are really small shops or just started out and um, are watching to kind of learn. You got to stop what you're doing when you run into a problem like this and you've got to call your customer. Um, let the customer know up front what's going on. Do not take it in your own hands to cut up or modify somebody's car. Believe it or not, there are people out there that are really weird about stuff being perfect and um, not doing what we just did I know some people like that I'm not like that I'm far from that I will hack my personal stuff up real fast but this is not my stuff so this is not my call I called the customer we went over everything that uh, you know options that we had the customer said Courtney do what you got to do to make it work 
That's what he said. All right, so on our moldings that go on our quarter panel, this has got dust all over it. Um, back here, we are gonna put four pieces of double side tape on them. This is gonna cost you double the material, and this stuff's not cheap. Um, we're using the good 3M stuff, but I'm hoping that this will make sure that it sticks. So we're gonna run four strips total um, on pretty much every molding. The only molding I might not run four on is maybe the door moldings. I might just one run across top one, one on the bottom, one on top. It's a nice long piece. It's not have a lot of pressure. These shorter pieces, uh, when they're bowed and stuff like that, they have a lot of pressure to spring back in one little area versus this long piece will straighten out uh, relatively easy. Um, we might go ahead and run four on that, but at least make sure you put four on all your small pieces, especially ones like this. Like this is, this is God awful, terrible. So we're gonna try to straighten this out before we put it back on, get four pieces on there and try to press this thing on firmly and hope that it stays. All right, now one thing that a lot of y'all probably don't know, I've known people in the body shop world that don't even know it. If you go to 3M's website, okay, the 3M double-sided tape, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the same for all double-sided tape, but I can tell you that 3M will tell you directly on their website, you can read it and watch a video on it. Double-sided tape is pressure activated. So a lot of people don't understand that and they just want to put stuff on and heat it up, you know, and think that heat will make it stick. Um, heat does help make it stick. Double-sided tape is hard, harder to stick when it's cold because it's not as soft, you know, and gooey, I guess you could say. Um, but double-sided tape is pressure activated. So in order to activate your double-sided tape, it requires you pushing a good amount of pressure on it, and then that activates the adhesion. If you think I'm pulling your sleeve, go Google 3M double-sided tape, go to their website and read about the pressure activated, um, the way it works. If you want to get it dead on the money, just Google pressure activated double-sided tape. It'll pull right up 3M, It'll show you the role of red tape. There's a video and a, a written out explanation of how the product works, um, you know, and how the glues activate under pressure. So you gotta make sure when you're doing your moldings, you gotta make sure you apply pressure, push them on nice and firm, check your tops, make sure they're pushed on firm to activate that adhesion. Four o'clock, Thursday afternoon, Mars Friday. I'm only scheduled to work eight to 11 on Fridays. Man, we are running out of time fast if i have to work ot i'll work ot to get it done it's getting picked up on sunday uh, i'm about to bring ed in for the last hour and about to knock some stuff out one thing i wanted to address is i did have a customer request of how we go about assembling painted parts okay if we could do a video or throw a video on it um i don't have a lot of content to be able to actually do that on this video unfortunately we got down to crunch time and we just kind of rushed everything together uh, the truth is, a lot of times when we're assembling painted parts, we're either we're just really careful. Um, one way that you can protect yourself if uh, you're not used to doing this is take your three quarters inch um, masking tape and mask every single edge. Uh, that's where your paint's going to chip at. So take your three quarters and go along the edge of every freaking thing that you're putting together and mask it up. That way they don't touch, uh, just like we did on the door when we did it over there. So everywhere that you have an edge, put masking tape on both pieces before you start putting it together. That way if they do bump, it's tape against tape and they won't chip. So that's my biggest piece of advice. Anything you're afraid of messing up or anything, put tape across it. If you watch people build $300,000 race cars, uh, that stuff fascinates me. Uh, if you pay very close attention to them shops, they mask up everything during assembly. Um, so masking tape is your friend, buy some masking tape. Um, preferably, I would recommend getting some like uh, uh, easy release tape from like Home Depot or Lowe's for your house walls because the 3M stuff, the yellow stuff that we use is designed to stick. Uh, it's a little thicker, but it's designed to stick and sometimes you can pull the paint. Uh, you know, some areas the adhesion might not be as great depending on how you prepped it. If you prepped it really good, you should be good, but you never know. Don't chance it, man. Um, just use low tack, uh, quick release, easy release, whatever it is. Like you got that green frog tape or the purple tape is what I use on my personal car. Even my personal car, I'm careful not to pull paint because you just never know. Um, but use some low tack stuff so that you're less likely to pull your paint. Mask every edge up, everything that's gonna touch, uh, anything that you are gonna possibly bump, just mask it up, put everything together and pull your tape off. That's my advice for you.